Welcome everybody. I'm super excited to be here today with you in this workshop for Digitrek. My name is Pablo Farias and I'm the founder of Zenva. Before we begin our presentation, we are going to go back in time a few years as well as go to a different place. The Atacama Desert in the north of Chile is the driest place in the world. And I happened to grow up there in a mining town. Back in the 90s, as you can probably imagine, this wasn't precisely Silicon Valley. Um, so there wasn't too much going on with digital technologies. Um, luckily, I had the opportunity to visit relatives in the United States and I got my hands on a programming book that taught how to make games and how to code in C++. Unfortunately, I didn't really get far in the book. It was too advanced, too difficult, and I couldn't find any support to get ahead with this uh, desire that I had to make games. It took many, it was many years down the road when I actually learned how to do all of these things. So I did have an attempt at those teenage years, but it was uh, too difficult. And that is one of the reasons that why um, I started Zemba, a company that focuses on teaching, coding, and game creation through online courses. We help uh, individuals in our, in our product Zemba Academy, as well as schools, teachers, students in our product Zemba schools. Our courses include real world projects, such as games, augmented reality apps, websites, and a lot of other um, digital solutions of various sorts. And all of that is using languages and tools that are utilized in the industry. Courses usually consist of um, videos recorded by industry practitioners that show you how to set up everything, how to code line by line, how to get it all up and running so that you can follow along and create various different projects. Upon completion, uh, students are awarded with a certificate that they can use to boost their portfolio or CV or LinkedIn. Um, the project that I'm personally the most excited about right now, of what we're working on is Zemba Schools, where we have courses on various languages that are mapped to the Australian curriculum. And the reason why I'm sharing all of this is because I'm very, very passionate about technology and I want to do my best to try to transmit that enthusiasm in this workshop so that you can see the sort of things that you can build with these tools and how useful it can be um, not only if you want to become a developer but also if you're going to work with technical people if you want to be involved in exciting projects that involve any kind of technology um, so if you are a, an educator and you want and you would like to, to, to pilot this with your students uh, at no cost, uh, of course, you can contact me directly using my, my email there or submit uh, the form in our website. All right, so for today's session, we are going to be going the base, uh, over the basics of Python and Python Turtle, and we are going to create a mini game. So we are going to start from the absolute basics, talk about what algorithms are, what they do, and build our first game. Hopefully you are able to follow along and you can pause the video and watch it as many times as you like if you are on the recorded session. All right, so the journey is gonna be more or less going about what is Python, why is it useful, how we can get started with Python and the basics of Turtle, the library that we will use. We're gonna create a solar system mini project and then we're gonna focus on our game project. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what that game, that final game, is going to look like. So this is what the final game is going to look like. I'm loading it here in our Zemba Schools platform. So I have this game and it is, the goal here is to take this, this little turtle. We want to take that turtle to the ocean. So once you take, I, I'm moving this with the, with the keyboard. And when you take the turtle to the ocean, then you see a message that says you win. So this is a really simple game that includes a basic controlling controlled by the keyboard and as well as uh, logic and other programming aspects that we are going to talk about. So what is Python? Python is a programming language. A programming language is simply a way for us to tell computers what to do because computers don't necessarily understand English. If you want to create a game or a program, you have to use a programming language. When it comes to programming language, depending on the ranking, 
Python is always up there at the top when it comes to popularity. Uh, it's usually in the, in the first or second spot, depending on the ranking that you look at. And that means that a lot of people, millions of people around the world are using Python to create everything from websites, apps, to games, uh, robotics. Uh, Python is huge in Internet of Things, robotics, electronics, all of that, as well as the upcoming field of artificial intelligence and data science. Uh, what powers things like self-driving cars, autonomous vehicles, medical diagnosed applications, um, facial recognition software, and a lot, a lot of other things. So Python is everywhere and it can do anything. It is a general purpose programming language. Now, to be able to code in Python, we need to have what's called a development environment. And for this workshop, there are two um, options here that we can utilize. One of them is to have Python installed in our computers and to have a code editor. So you can do that in any operating system, whether it is Windows, Mac, or Linux. You can have, you can install Python and you can install a code editor, which is a tool where you write code. Another option is to use an online platform called repli.com. The only downside to that is that you have to create an account with them and you have to put your email address in there. So if you are a student watching this, you might not be um, it might not be the best, best option for the, you, depending on the, the rules of your school. Um, so I am going to go briefly over both options. And I'm going to start with the Replit option because it is a little bit quicker. So Replit, you can, found that, you can find that product at replit.com. And in my case, I'm, I am already logged in. But if, if I wasn't logged in, I'm going to open this from a private window to show you. If you're not logged in, you, you have to click where it says start coding, and then it's going to ask you to create an account. And if you are creating an account, please um, make sure that you have the permission of your, of your parent or your teacher, and also that you don't put any, pers any personal details here, any, your name or anything that could identify you as a username. So that is a general um, uh, best practice when it comes to signing to online products. But again, uh, please make sure that you are able to use that if you are going that way. Otherwise, and in fact, um, my personal preference is to have Python installed. But firstly, if you did create the Replit account, then what you do is to, to be able to follow along where it says create, you click on the plus sign. And then um, you, you have to select here Python with turtle. And you can give your project a name, for example, Digitrek. And you can create that, that project by clicking Create REPL. So that creates the project. And then when the project is created, you're going to find um, the, that this is where the code goes. So it's loading at the moment, but we should be able to see that shortly. So you would see your code in, in this area here. And when you wanna, so this is where you write your code. And it's fine if this looks like an alien language to you right now because we haven't done any programming. I'm just showing you, this is some default stuff that will sh appear here. So we are gonna be typing our own code. Uh, but when you type your own code, then what you do is click run. And when you run that code, that means that the code is executed by your computer. So your computer takes these instructions and carries them out. So in this case, it's drawing a square. All right, so that's how Replit works. And again, it's totally fine if you've never seen code before. Don't don't get uh, don't worry about that. The other option to have Python installed and a code editor. This is also where if you are on a school context, your teacher might be able to help you out. But essentially, you have to go to python.org, which is the homepage of the Python programming language. Python is free, by the way, and in here you need to click on downloads and you're going to see the download button for, for your current operating system. So in my case, I'm on a windows. So I see here the option to download the windows version of Python. If you are on a Mac, you're probably, you, you should be fine clicking here because this page will know what operating system you are in. So what you do is you download this file, uh, into your computers, usually your downloads folder. 
And when that completes downloading, then you need to click on that file. And that will prompt the instructions for installation. Now, I'm not gonna go over the installation. It's pretty straightforward. You just have to accept all of the default settings here. But I do wanna say that if you are on Windows, please make sure to check on this one, this checkbox here, because otherwise you're gonna have to do extra manual steps in order to run Python code. Whereas if you check on this, this checkbox, it's just going to work, all right? So that's, that's the installation of Python, but we also talked about a code editor. You can use any code editor with Python. It works with all of them. My preferred option is Visual Studio Code. So if you type code.visualstudio.com, th this editor is also free and open source, which means you can use it and uh, you don't have to pay any, any money. This is created by Microsoft, so it is certainly a secure um, um, program to download as long as you download it from the official website. So in here, you're also going to see download for Windows and the installation here, you just, just take in any, um, download the file and then the installation is very straightforward. And once it is installed, um, it's going to look, it's going to look like this. All right. So once, once, once this is installed, we are going to create a new folder in our computer. So you can go to your C drive, for example, like my PC, this PC, C drive, and I've created a folder here called Digitrack. And inside of that folder, you're not going to see anything at the beginning. In Visual Studio Code, we go to File, Open Folder, and then we find that folder we created, Digitrack, select Folder, and in here, we're going to create a new file. So I'm going to go to File, New Text File, and then I'm going to go to Save. Where is it? Save As. And we are going to save this as a, I'm going to call this digitrack.py. So py is the extension for Python. So you need to make sure to, that you type .py for this to work. Then Save, and we've got our Python file. And just to show you that this is working, if I go back to that um, Breplit example here, I can copy this code um, and then I can go back to Visual Studio and paste that code. And I'm, I just need to add done at the end. That is just a small um, detail for, um, for things to work here. And if you go to run, uh, sorry, uh, there's a play button up on the top uh, right. And when I press that button, um, sorry, that was not um, part of it. When I press that button, I can see that the the square is created as well. Okay, so the, there is just one thing that I had to add at the end so that the the screen doesn't close because you you can see that the the window closes. So the one thing that I have to add. So we have to type turtle dot done. This is will this will just um I'm saving this is just to prevent the window from closing. Okay, but don't worry about any of this. We're gonna go over everything from scratch. You can, if you create this empty file, you can also just type uh, print and then double quotes, hello, and then save by going to file, save, or press control S. And um, sorry, I forgot the parentheses there, like this, save that. And this should show you hello down here. So if you are able to see that hello, it means that Python is working and you're good to, to, to follow along with the coding aspect. All right. Okay. So if, now that we have that, um, now that we have that, that set up there, the next step is we're going to go over the, the basics of Python turtle. All right. We're going to learn how to get started with the library, how to move the turtle around and how to, um, make it rotate, how to change direction, how to, uh, uh, and we're going to talk about coordinate system, and we're also going to be drawing circles so that we can do our solar, our solar system mini project. All right. So what I'm going to do now is have my, my code ready to go and empty. And in the, from this part onwards to, to follow along, you, you need to have this, uh, Python setup. 
So you need to be able to either print out hello in the in Visual Studio Code or any code editor, or you need to be able to uh, run the Replit account as I showed earlier. Okay, so if you don't have those parts, you can you can watch those segments again or ask uh, your teacher for for help. And once you are ready to run Python code, we can we can begin. Okay, so to to start with uh, Python Turtle, the first thing that we type is from space turtle import and then an asterisk. So what this means is that okay, Turtle is the library that we use to make those drawings. And that a library is an external component of the language. So we have Python. Python is the programming language, but we want to be using the Turtle library in our Python code. So this line here, it means that we are bringing in that Turtle library into our project. So after I've done that, I'm going to press Control S to save, and we can um, we can now let's see what happens if I if I press play here. So nothing, nothing just yet, no errors. But if I want to, um, if I want to have the turtle going somewhere, you can type, you can type forward, and then parentheses, and then you can type a number of pixels. For example, let's make the turtle move a hundred pixels. I'm going to save and press play. Um, that actually appeared on my other screen, and it. Um, it disappeared right away. At the end, we have to type turtle dot done and parentheses. So that is so that um, sorry, just done, just done here. Let's run that. Okay, okay. I, I have to apologize because every time I run the code, this uh, window appears on my other screen. So um, I don't know how to make it appear in this screen. So I'm gonna be dragging this every time that I run the code. Okay, but let's let's unpack with with just done. We've told uh, our code that we want to bring in the Python turtle. Then we told our turtle to move 100 pixels forward. The turtle by default starts, it's always looking at, uh, to the right by default. And then we type done just so that this window doesn't disappear. Um, what if we wanted our turtle to move and then to change direction? Let's say that we wanted to move 100 pixels and then we wanted to move it uh, to rotate to the right and move another 100 pixels. What we can do for that is add more code here. We can type um, right, a parenthesis like that, and then forward 100 pixels. So what we're doing here is we're telling it move forward 100 pixels, turn to the right, and move forward another 100 pixels. Let's try it out. Okay, we are missing the angle here. So we have to tell it to write, to go right 90 degrees and then go forward. Then we have that, right? So the turtle moves 100 pixels, then it turns to the right 90 degrees, and then it moves another 100 pixels. Um, just like we have uh, right, we can also use left. So we can tell the, the, the turtle to turn left by 90 degrees and to move forward, let's say 50 pixels. I'm going to save and I'm going to run that. Here it is. So there we go. We move forward, turn right, move 100, turn left and move 50. So this, what you see here is called an algorithm. An algorithm is simply a set of instructions that tell a computer what to do. In this case, we are telling it to move forward, to turn, move forward, turn left, move forward, and then we are done with our algorithm. Um, all of programming is nothing but just adding a lot of um, a lot of code in this manner. So you are telling the computer what to do. Now, something that um, we can do in uh, in Turtle is to change the color. For example, at the beginning, we can set, we can say color and then parentheses, double quotes, and type the name of the color. Let's say that we want the turtle to move uh, in color red. 
let's bring that up the result let's close the previous one and reload it all right there we go you can see that now the the turtle is moving on a red color and what's important to mention is that with algorithms the order of the steps does matter the fact that i am typing color at the beginning it means that the color will change before all of this movement takes place what happens if i if i um if i cut this line of code and add it somewhere here by the way empty lines don't don't really matter i'm just adding them for so that it is easy to read what happens if i run this now let's close the previous one and run it again you can see that it, if we don't get the same result that we did last time we are moving then we're turning that we are moving and all of that was with black and only then we're changing the color to red and with that we're turning left and we are moving forward okay with that i would like to create a square and if you are watching this and you want to try it on your own you can actually pause the video and try to create a square so at the moment we don't have a square um, so if you want to try this on your own if you're watching please pause the video and try to make a square otherwise i'll show you the solution okay so the way that we can create a square is that we move forward we turn right we move forward and then we need to turn right again so we need to turn right again let's delete all of, all of this stuff here then um, once we've turned right we need to move forward again and let's see how close are we of having a square let's open that up um, here it is so we need to again move uh, turn right and move forward one more time so we can we can copy that and paste it here and now let's close the previous one and open the new one we have our square um, what's really cool is that you can also paint the the shapes that you are creating so at the moment we have we have learned how to change the color of the line but we are also able to uh, fill in the shapes and the way that that is done is that we start by specifying the color so the color could be in this case um, let's make it green so color parentheses quotes green and what we type to to tell the to tell python okay now we're going to be filling in something we type begin underscore fill and then parentheses and what that tells the program is that you're going to start to fill in something now and once we're done we type end fill and also uh, parentheses the reason why we're adding the parentheses is because this is called a method or a function so we we're basically running a certain instruction and for that we that that is just how we pass in the parentheses let's go and run this and see what happens so there we go you can see that the turtle moved created the square and then filled it all in and something i, I wanted to mention was that you you might have noticed that this that there's a certain speed to this movement so it is you, you can see how it is moving if you wanted the, the square to be drawn instantly if you don't want to be uh, looking at how turtle moves each time you can type speed uh, parentheses and then pass in the value zero as i mentioned earlier when we're using parentheses we're running we're running an instruction where we are running what's called a function there is uh, the specifics of how speed works and how color works are somewhere in the turtle library when we pass in something in here we're passing what's called a parameter a parameter is a value that specifies how you want this to run in this case speed uh, takes different values and one of them if you pass in zero the there is no um, drawing period so let's try that it's instant so as soon as i as soon as i press um, play it's instantly drawn and with color we're also passing we're passing a piece of text here with the name of the color um, what if you don't know what to pass in so how do i know that i have to pass in zero how do i know that i have to pass in green that is where the python turtle documentation comes into um, into play and i will show you that website here so the website the official website of the turtle library is the one i'm showing on the screen 
And in here, you can find all of these methods. For example, we can go and find color. And with color, you can see that it takes an argument. And then you can see more information about what type of arguments it takes, as well as what um, examples. So for all of these things that I am doing in this, in this workshop, I want you to know that you can always go into the documentation and try to um, explore a little bit more of what it does. Um, so th that is an important part of developing in general, that you, that you, it's always a good idea to have the documentation um, at, at hand. Okay, so we have seen how to work with colors, some basics. We have seen how to draw a shape and how to move the turtle forward, how to make it turn right or left uh, by a certain uh, number of angles. But I want to, I want to, there are a couple of other things that I want to show you. And what we can do, if you want to keep this file, you can go and create another file and then we can work on a different file. Or you can delete these contents and, um, and start uh, from scratch now. I will personally actually rename this file. Let's rename it to the square example or something like maybe 01, just because it's the first one, square, so that you have that there. And we're going to use this button here or file, new file, to create a new Python file. This is going to be 02 and it's going to have uh, further examples.py. At the beginning of this new file, I want to have the same import code. And I also want to have the speed so that things happen instantly. And I'm going to copy with control C and paste it with control V. Okay, so we have another file now. Um, lastly, I do want to have the done at the bottom so that the, the window doesn't close each time. So we are going to add our code in here. Um, one of the things that I wanted to show you was the rotation. We have we have we have learned how to rotate the the turtle relatively to our position. To to illustrate that example, um, let me let me bring up a a drawing pad here to illustrate the difference with what we are going to be doing next. So let's see if I, if this um, works. So I should be able to open. I'm just opening my phone screen here so that you can see my phone screen. Um, and I can show you what we're going to do next. Okay. So what we have done so far is that if, for example, your turtle is pointing that way, we have learned how to make it go to the left, to the, to the right, sorry. Sorry about that. All right. So we have, uh, we have shown how to make it go to the right by a certain angle. So if I, I said, for example, if we were looking that way, I said that we could turn 90 degrees, right? So we were there and we turned right 90 degrees. Um, but so we have only learned how to move position relative to where we are now. So if a turtle is looking there, I know that I can turn it this way or this way. But there's also a way to just tell it where you want it to be looking. Because imagine your turtle is looking this way and you would like to be looking north. Uh, how can you do that? All right, so that's why we use th uh, that. Is um, There's a method we can use for that. If I want my turtle to be looking to the right, it doesn't matter where it's previously looking at. It could be looking that way or this way, but I want it to be looking to the right. Then what we have to do is type set heading and then parenthesis zero. So let's 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 uh, let's uh, start by moving our turtle, to, uh, rotating it to the right. Let's say thirty degrees. Let's delete that. Okay. Let, let me show you this first. So we are. Um, let's run that again. All right. Yeah. So so we have rotated our turtle thirty degrees. Right. It started looking to the right, and now it's looking down in thirty degrees from the from that horizontal line. If I wanted to be looking again to the uh, to the right. But I forgot how many degrees have, let's say we've done many things. I really forgot if it's 30 or some other number. You can always type set heading and then parenthesis zero and then save. And when you do that, you are restoring the, the orientation of the turtle so that it is looking 
to the right. Um, if you want it to be looking up, you can say 90 degrees here. And here we go. So it's up 90 degrees. And if you want it to be looking to the left, you can type uh, 180 degrees. So this is how we can rotate the turtle. Let's uh, close the previous one and run it again. This is how we can rotate the turtle to any arbitrary position that we want. Okay, so that's, this is, um, let's, let's add a comment here. So a comment is when you, we add text that's intended for another person to read. To add a comment, we can type in the, the hash sign and then this can be rotation. Then we have also learned how to move the turtle in a straight line from where we are now from, uh, in, the, in the forward direction. But if I want to position my turtle anywhere, anywhere else, I can also specify the coordinates. And to do that, we use this method called go to, and then we have to specify the position on X and Y. So for example, we started, we started in the zero comma zero position in the origin. Let's say that we, I want to move it 100 pixels. I, I want it to be a hand, in a position that is 100 on the x-axis and let's say 100 as well on the y-axis or 200 on the y-axis. I, um, I can run that. And I have moved my coordinate to that position. I do have a little slide here to help understand the concept of coordinates if, if this is something that you are new, that you haven't seen before. Our turtle starts in position 0, 0. If we move to the right on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, if we move to the right from that 0, the number will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, it goes on Python turtle, it goes um, all the way to, I think it's four, it, it's 200, I think, yeah, 200. It's a maximum, but you can change that in the settings of the of your program. So you can move on the x-axis. And then if you move to the left of that origin point, then it's a negative number. And the same thing happens for the y-axis. If you move up, it's a positive number. If you move below that, that origin, it's a negative number. So in our code, I could position our turtle, let's say on the, on the left side, I could type minus 100. And then I can run that. And you can see that it's now moved to the left of that origin. You might have noticed that we're always drawing. Wherever we move the turtle, it's always drawing. So let's go and add a few more different points here to show you. So let's say that we are moving to you know, some other position and back to the origin at the end. Let's run that. And you can notice that it's almost like we are traveling that we're doing that whole circuit. Um, if we remove the speed, uh, the, the speed, you, you would actually see it moving. So I, I, I have added a comment, a hash, so that it was, this no longer runs. Let's, um, let's execute that. So you can see that it's, it's kind of drawing the whole figure, all right? But what happens if you don't want your, uh, if you don't want to be drawing all these segments? Let's say if you just want to move the turtle, but without having to, to do all that traveling, then what you can do is um, it's called lifting the pen. It's almost like you're holding a pen and then you lift the pen. So let's say that I will move to this first position, but I don't want to be drawing the line all the way there. Then I can type in pen up and then parentheses. And if you do, if you do that, let's, um, let's also make it uh, remove the speed, which will help um, make it more visual. So you can see that it did all the movement, but without making any lines. You can also put the choose to put the pen down at one point. If you put the pen down and then parentheses again, it will um, it will it will skip that first. So initially it moved from here to here, and that one that one wasn't drawn, and then it did the rest uh, with the drawing aspect. All right. So that, these are a few other examples that are going to come in handy. Rotation and position by coordinates. Next, we're going to draw our circles and our solar system project. 
solarsystem.py new file here and uh, this new file is also going to have the this uh, first couple of lines um, let's make it uh, instant here and at the end uh, done okay so circles firstly a quick reminder of what circles how circles work so a circle has a a radius which is the distance from the center of the the circle from the origin to the uh, circumference to the border of the of the circle so that distance is called the radius and in python turtle when we want to draw a circle we need to uh, we need to be adding the the um, um, the radius as a parameter so let's go to our code and i'm going to draw a circle to draw a circle what we do is type circle and then parenthesis the radius let's let's draw a, a circle with a radius of 10 pixels so you can see i've drawn a very little circle in there if you want to draw a bigger circle we'll give it a bigger radius what is this here is all right if you want to paint the circle of a certain color um, we can use what we learned earlier of begin fill begin underscore fill parenthesis and then the number the, the number of the color sorry the name of the color orange and then end underscore fill parenthesis and saving and running okay it looks like there's a i made an error here apologies so the, uh, I need to set the color first. Color, parenthesis, uh, quotes, orange, and then begin field, circle, and save that. Okay, so there we have a circle. If we want to draw a solar system, a simple solar system, we would want to start by painting the background black for the sky, and we can do that by, um, by typing. Firstly, we need to get a hold of the screen. So I'm going to add a comment to explain what this is. Um, we need to type screen equals third um, equals screen like this and parentheses. So this is just part of the turtle library. And it is what is this doing is saying we're going to be accessing screen settings. So we, we, we type in a name for our variable. That means this is a name that we, we can give this any name. And then we receive that access to the screen settings. So if this is too complex at the moment, we can just think of it as the way to set up the screen of a certain color. Essentially, we get the screen and then we can do things with the screen. So now that we have the screen, we can add screen dot B background color, BG color. And what this means is that we are taking our screen and then dot, it means that we are going to access something that belongs to the screen. We're going to access the background color and we need to set that color in these parentheses. For that, I'm going to type double quote and the name of the color, black. Um, so let's close this, uh, this uh, previous example and run it again. All right, so as you can see, we've painted the, 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 the screen and we've drawn our first planet. So for a solar system project, if you wanted to draw, let's say you want to draw a planet that's got a radius of 60 pixels and you want to have a certain distance between them this would be the design of our project um, if you want to have something like this what i can do now is give you an opportunity if you want to if you are watching this and you want to try to draw this on your own you can pause the video and have a go at drawing a solar system like this otherwise i will go now and showcase the solution all right and we're going to be using a flowchart to explain what we're doing first. So in our, in, in our algorithm, we want to start by setting the color to black, as we've done already. Then we're going to set the color to orange. And we're going to draw and fill in a circle that's going to be 60 pixels of radius. Then we want to be moving forward. As you can see, there's that separation there. After we've moved forward, we want to do something very similar. We want to set the color to gray, draw another circle and move forward. And then we're going to be repeating that for the two other planets. 
Let's now go into our code and implement this logic. So I'm going to bring 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 um, our code editor and um, let's see if we can have both of this uh, flowchart and our code at the same time. So we are setting our screen to black, then we're setting the color to orange. We're going to draw and fill in a circle with 60 pixels. And then we're going to move forward. So just type forward parentheses, and we're going to be moving by uh, 100 pixels. And because we're going to be doing this for the other colors as well, we can copy and paste this code for each one of the four planets. And then we can go and make individual changes. So this one's gray. The radius should be 20 pixels. The, the next movement here should only be 80 pixels. Then we're drawing the red planet. The radius should be 40. And the movement of the distance is 90. And lastly, we're drawing a green planet, which will have a radius of 30. And there's no further movement. Let's see if this works or if we need to make any further adjustments. Yeah. So you can see that we drew the planets, but we're drawing in between the movement. So we need to take care of that as well as we learned earlier. With the um, with the pen up and pen down. So every time before we, we do these movements, we should do a pen down and then we should do a pen, sorry, a pen up and then pen down, parentheses. Let's, so let's add that to, to each one of these, of these forward uh, movements. We're going to copy and paste, copy and paste. There we go. All right, save and run that again. And there we have it our solar system project. Okay, so we've gone over quite a few things so far and um, we can draw all sorts of shapes. It's really, there's no limit to what sort of shapes you can draw at this point in time. And we've drawn a mini solar system project. We've also learned how to move the turtle, how to rotate the turtle, set the direction. We talked about the coordinates and we drew circles. Um, lastly, we talked about how a simple flow chart like this can help you navigate an algorithm and how it is a useful tool to have under your belt. So next, let's talk about actually the game that we are going to build. And I can show you the game once once again. So let's let's um, let's bring that up on the screen one, one more time. I'm, I'm just running here this from Zemba schools because we have all of these in lesson content for, for and, and with um, curriculum mapping and all of that. So I am moving the turtle around and I am moving it with the keyboard. So there's something something to the, to, to the keyboard there. And when I reach the ocean, I get the text that says you win. It's a very simple game. From a design perspective, we usually start by doing a bit of a mock-up just like we did here. Before we actually start coding, it's good to have an idea of what you're going to be coding. So they can be done on paper. They can be done on any sort of tools. Um, we generally do them on paper. They, they are sort of like a bit, a bit handmade, just so that it is for, for people to know what they're going to be building. And the movement is going to be with the arrow keys on your keyboard. So before we, we go and start coding this, this logic, I, I did want to talk about how it's going to work. We're going to start, uh, start our algorithm and this is going to be a very broad flowchart. It's not going to go into specifics. It's going to be super broad. We want to begin by drawing the environment that is the beach, the sand, and we're going to be using doing that with concepts that we've already learned at this point. We're going to set the turtle to the starting position because it always starts at the same in the same part which is not necessarily the origin. And we've also learned how to position the turtle. This type of block in a flowchart means user input, it means we're, you're waiting for user input. If the user presses any of the arrow keys, the arrow keys being the ones that I showed earlier, this one's here, then we're going to move the turtle. You know, depending on which key they press, we're going to move on that direction. And we're going to check whether we've reached the ocean or not. If, we've, if we haven't yet reached the ocean, then 
we just keep playing as we were before. So we keep just interacting with the arrow keys and getting the turtle to its goal. But if we did reach the ocean, then we will show a completion message to the user. In this case, you win. And, not, and then we're going to terminate the program. Notice that the completion message block is the same as the user input block because that block is used for user input and output. So that is just a convention for flowcharts. All right, so with this in mind, uh, uh, with, uh, with this with this set that we, we can, let's, let's place this here on the side and place our code so that we can use that as a guide to craft our solution. Um, I'm going to start by creating a new file and let's save the previous one and um, open a new, you, you, can, you can do it from here or from file new text file. Just make sure to give it a proper uh, py extension. I'm going to call this file 04-game.py and we want to start with similar code to what we've been using, which is that, that importing statement with the speed as well set to zero and ending with the done um, function so that the, the screen doesn't, doesn't shut on us each time. Although with the, we will see what happens with the user input here. I'm not sure if it will close the same manner. Okay, so from our flowchart, we want to start by drawing the sand. And the sand needs to look something like this. Um, something like this. So there, there is a big area that is um, brown and then a big area that is the ocean, that is a rectangle that is blue. And I have to say right away that there are multiple ways of doing that. This. There is not a correct answer here as long as it satisfies the requirements. The first thing we're going to do is set, we can set the background color to the sand color and then go and draw the beach. That's one way of doing it, okay? To paint the background color, we've done that already in our solar system. We, we got the screen and set a background color. So I'm going to copy this code, control C, and then paste it here. And the color you can you can type brown you can type orange and it will it will work okay so we can do it like that so that will definitely work if you wanted to use colors that don't have a word or, or if you're not happy with the the, the chosen um, color if you google for hex color there, there's a way of expressing colors called hexadecimal okay and it is just a way to describe a color using a, uh, the hexadecimal number. And um, even on Google, you can find a tool that, that, that can help you with, with this. So if you go and find a suitable sand color and this value here with the hash sign at the beginning, you can, you can copy that. And then instead of writing orange, you can, you can actually paste that color and it will work just as fine. There you go. So now that we have the sand, we're going to go and draw the ocean. So a piece of information that you need to know is that the, the default turtle screen is um, 400 times 300 pixels. That means that, uh, that we can go up to 200 on each 200 on one side, minus 200 on the other side, and then 150 up and minus 150 down because we remember that the origin is in the middle of the screen. So we want to position our turtle somewhere up at the top. So somewhere, somewhere here, and then start drawing our rectangle. So I'm going to, I'm going to lift the pen, pen up so that we're not drawing the whole thing and then go to all, um, if we go 200, we're going all the way to the to the right side. So my, a good this might be good to illustrate using using these the um, these nodes. Um, so let's 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 do that. Um, let's create a let's create a new node, and I will draw the screen here. So 
this is our screen. This is where we are at. If we go, if we go 200, this is zero. If we go 200, we're going to end up here. Um, but we, we can move a little bit less than 200. Let's say 150. So we end up somewhere here. Uh, and from there, from there, we can, we can, we can do our, our rectangle like that. This will be in total 300 pixels. And this will be, if we move 150, then this distance will be 50. So essentially we want to draw a rectangle and paint it blue. And that rectangle will be 50 on one side and 300 on the other side. So I'm going to be moving to 150 and then all the way up. That is also 850 because the, the total on, 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 a, on, a, on a vertical axis, this is zero, this is 150, and this one here is minus 150. 150. Then from here, we are going to put the pen down because now we do want to be drawing. And uh, we're going to move forward by 50. And then we're going to turn right uh, by 90 degrees and move forward all 300 and then right again 90 degrees. So this is the same as we did initially with the square. Forward 50. And let's 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 see how we're going with, with those numbers so far. Let's let me have a look. All right, so it looks like the screen is actually bigger than I anticipated. Um, I guess you, you can actually resize the screen. Um, normally it is by this is the, the, the default um, size, but it, it looks like it is totally responsive. Um, in which case we can probably move much higher than that. So we can we can just go really extreme here, like a thousand. And then um, let's let's say that we we're gonna move forward by two thousand down. And then right again here, and then forward two thousand. So let's let's see what this looks like. Yeah. So it, it also looks like in the on the horizontal axis we could probably go much much bigger than fifty. So I, I will do that. Instead of fifty, let's say five hundred and five hundred. And also we want to be painting. To paint, we can go back to our previous example. We set a color. We begin fill. Copy that and bring it down here it's going to be blue and at the end of this we want to end the fill save and let's let's run that and here we go so we, we made it so that the screen can be much much bigger but i think there will still be a point where it you're not gonna be able to see it but that's that, that's fine okay that that works for me um so now that we've done the drawing, we need to set the turtle to a starting position, and we can we can uh, we can do that. We can we can set it back to the even the origin if we want. So go to zero comma zero. Let's run that, and you can see that we are drawing all the way to the origin. Let let's move it a little bit more to the left, and also we we shouldn't be drawing our way there. So we should we should do a pen up and move it to let's say minus 200 or minus 150 zero let's try that up that out okay there we are now you see that we are using this arrow and in fact we can actually change that to a turtle turtle is one of the default cursors or that, that we have available and um the, the way to do that is uh, by using a, a function called shape we can type shape parentheses and call this turtle that will change it to a turtle and also we can change the color of the turtle to green so that's a bit more realistic let's um run that again yeah there we go so we have our turtle now and what we do what we need to do next according to our flowchart is to take care of the movement of the turtle and to do that there's something that i will have to introduce in, um, in 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 turtle we are going to be if to, for the movement we're also going to be using that screen that we already created up here so 
and I will show you that we are going to need something else as well. So strictly speaking, you need to type screen dot on key and then parentheses and then in here we need to we need to add what happens when you when you move and, and, and for that we need to create our own function so that we move the turtle whenever somebody presses the up key. So that one goes here. This is going to be our own function. We're going to change this by the way. I'm just typing it now to, to, to explain that we're going to be replacing this. And then double quote up. That's going to be for the up key. Oops. We're going to be doing the same for all four directions. For down, left, and right. Now, what is actually going to go here? We need to create, we need to create a function. A function is a piece of code that can be reutilized and called in many different places. In that manner, we can create a function to move the turtle up. And every time that we press the up key, we will be calling that function. We will be moving our turtle. To create a function, type def space, and then the name of your function, which can be anything you want. As long as it doesn't have spaces in between, there are a few other naming rules, but in general, letters and underscores are fine. We can call our function move underscore up. And this function is not going to take any parameters. Parameters. We don't need to pass anything in here. So we can just add the parentheses like so. And then we use the colon to indicate that now we're going to type in the contents of our function. And the contents of our function, if we want to move the turtle up, we're going to be rotating the turtle up. So set heading like we did earlier, parentheses 90. And then we're going to be moving it forward by, let's say, 10. OK, and whenever let's copy that, that move up. Let's let's add move up to all of these here just to see if it works. OK, so at the moment, what I would what I would expect to see is that if we press any of the arrow keys, the turtle will move up and rotate up. Let's try it out. And it is um, it is not um, working. So let me just see if we if we get any sort of errors here. All right, so we got move up, left to right. Um, let me see if. Um, Okay, so I was missing uh, another statement here, which is screen dot listen, and this just tells this. Um, let's add a comment here. This tells the program to listen for key presses. Otherwise, it's not paying attention for this. Okay, let's try that out. Yeah, so we're able to move our turtle, our turtle now, but it moves up. It only moves up. Um, so as a challenge, if you are watching this, feel free to pause the video and have a go. Um, you can create other functions for the other movement. So if you want to try that out, you can pause the video here. Otherwise, I will be adding those other movements. OK, so I'm going to be adding the rest now. And they are all going to be similar to this one here. We can copy and paste this uh, multiple times and then change the naming. Let's change this to down. To be, mo to be uh, looking down, we need to be rotating by uh, you can either type minus 90 or 170. So it is all the way down when you're rotating. Move left. This will be a heading of 180. And move up. Uh, sorry, this should be right. And set heading of zero. Let's try it out, see if it works. And let me see if I... I, we have to also replace those here. So I forgot to do that bit. So let's go and add and um, move down, left and right. Let's try that out. So I can move my turtle now up and left and down. So it is moving now in all the directions. If you would like your turtle to move a little bit faster, you can increase the number of steps here. So 20, 20, 20 and um, 20. Because we're typing 20 multiple times, we could also create a variable to hold this number so that we only have to change that in one place. This could be called something like step. So we type, if we give it a name, equals, and then the number. And then instead of typing 20 each time, we just type step. 
So think of a variable as a container of some data that you can access and modify. So in this case, we, we only have to change this number once and it will automatically apply to all of the movement. Okay, so our turtle can definitely move a little bit faster now. The last thing that we have left yet to do is to add our winning condition. That means that when we reach the ocean, it should, um, it should give us a message. So for that, we're going to be checking whether we have reached the goal. That check itself can also be uh, with a function. So I'm going to add this up here. Check goal. Let's call this check underscore goal. And it's not going to receive any parameters. And then we need to add the column. On a Python turtle, the um, if you type x core, that gives you the x position of the turtle. So if the x position of the turtle is the beginning of the ocean, which is in a 150, then we have reached the goal. So for that, we're going to use what's called an if statement. So if x core, if the x position of the turtle is greater than 150 then and, and, and to do that then we need to add a colon um, then we're going to change the color to white so that we can write white text and write this is a method called write you win we can also choose to hide the turtle and that can be done with a method a function called hide turtle and now, when do we actually call this? We need to be calling that after, according to our flowchart, after every time we move, we need to be checking. So after we've moved, we can add it down here, check goal, check goal, same and same. Okay, so let's try it out. And, and yep, so that works. But there is an issue, as you can see. I can still move the turtle, and I can, I can keep triggering this. So there's something else we have to do. Um, when, um, when, we, um, when we check the goal, we also need to deregister these ones here. Because otherwise, we're still, this is still running. And again, there are, many, there are different ways of doing this. Of doing this. Um, but uh, the one that I'm going to do is that inside of my check goal, when I when I have reached the goal, um, I will I will add a comment here. This is going to be deactivate the um, the key, the user input. And one way of doing that is by if you copy all of that and bring it in here, and it needs to be. You can use the tab button to move it all the way in because it needs to be. For things to work in Python, it needs to be in the same indentation. Instead of move up, if you type none uh, with a um, capital at the start, that is telling it not to do anything. None, none, and none. And let's run this to see if it works. Let's try that again. Here we go. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move my turtle and when I reach the ocean, you win. And, and if I keep pressing the buttons, nothing happens now because those events were registered. All right. So um, we have built our project. We've reached the end of our project. And um, what I thought that I would do to finalize it was perhaps to look at our flowchart one more time with the animation just to see whether you can we can discuss how we've done each one of these parts. So we started by drawing our environment. And we did that by painting the screen, painting the screen the sand color, and then by um, by drawing the the water. So we're going to right here, draw uh, water. Now, the drawing of the water could have, you, you, instead of doing a, forward and right, forward and right. You could also just do go to. So you could have also just gone go to, go to, go to and draw the whole thing. So there are, there are many ways of doing all of the things that I've been doing here. They can be done in different manners. Then 
we set the turtle to start position and also did some other turtle preparations like like making it green so i'm going to add a comment here that says turtle prep as well as setting up that step then we were waiting for the arrow keys and it's important to mention that the code doesn't necessarily go in this order so we are defi we are defining these methods here but that doesn't mean that they're being executed here they're just definitions this is where we are actually listening to um, defining actions for arrow keys and we move the turtle by using these four different methods the movement of the turtle depends on the direction of the key that was pressed and it starts by setting an orientation and then moving the turtle and then lastly checking the goal so we're doing that after each movement and the checking of the goal itself is essentially to compare the position of x to see whether we are in the watered area and if we if we're not there yet we just keep playing but if we are there we show this completion message and also we didn't put it here but we deactivate the user input all right so um i guess in summary when creating things in, in python python turtle we start by setting up the development environment then we get so that we can get a hello world working even just say hello on the screen then we start focusing on some of the core fundamentals like okay how do i actually draw a line how do i draw a square how do i draw a circle how do i rotate the turtle once you're done with those things you can create a mini project like the solar system and then we can incorporate more elements like user input text uh, conditions variables and the more advanced obviously some of the programming con uh, constructs ends up being different but um, i hope that it's been uh, it, I, I hope it's been enjoyable for for everyone and that you've been able to follow along remember that this is recorded so if some of the parts weren't a little bit too fast or you weren't sure about something you can always watch that again and also feel free to reach out and it's my email address if you are a school and you'd like to to try our Semba schools platform feel free to do, do so you can do it from our website or contact me and uh, individual learners uh, for individual learners we have the Zemba academy site thanks everyone for watching and i look forward to seeing you all in a future workshop